Ah, oh, shit. This episode of the BRG Podcast has been brought to you by our patrons. Here at BRG, we'd like to thank those patrons who have subscribed and donated. It is because of generosity like yours that makes this show possible. We are back from our holiday break, and it is time to catch up on the last month's worth of news, and boy, is there a lot. So we have Ziploc Bob joining us this evening to help us out. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the BRG Podcast. I'm your host, Warp Jester, and of course, as always, with me on my left, freezing his ass off in sub-zero weather, <laughs> my, 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 my frosty as a snowman, Kirok. <laughs> I hate you, Kirok. I'm awesome, how are you? I'm doing very well, and tonight we have good old Ziploc Bob joining us. He's back, baby. I'm back. I got a sore tail. <laughs> <laughs> so Wait, guys you say he's freezing yeah i'm the one with the cap the jacket blanket across my legs you know, and Bob, it's not always about you anyways guys <laughs> we are we are a gaming podcast that likes to cover all the latest news on gaming front as well as a little new media and other things you can always find out more about us over at our website rocketgaming.com on our discord uh which the links will be in the notes below and we do have a patreon also just so you know so the last of us there we'll talk more about at the end of the show but mm-hmm. hey this is a little awkward for us, so we apologize in advance here, guys. I know you guys have seen us all the way through. We did do the the, the, the respectable noble thing. We pre-recorded a lot of content for you guys to enjoy through the holiday yeah. season. However, we have been MIA, off doing our own things, having lots of fun and merriment that was not related to the podcast. And I, I, got, I got to tell you, Kirok, it was, it was busy. It was, it was very busy. It was... It's funny, even though we had... <laughs> you know, time away from this, uh, it, that time filled up with other things it, quite it, easily. It really did. Now, yeah. I, 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 will, I will say, though, I'm happy, though, because uh, a couple of things during my off time um, was I got a chance to get planning done for new shows. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, if you guys are, are, are so sub to the YouTube channel, you'll know that the new show, one of the new shows, is already up. Yeah. Yeah. On the YouTubes, and that is Inside the Gaming Mind, uh, which Kirok is on. So I've been doing that. Also doing some work, uh, getting things planned out and ready for a new show that's going to be on Twitch, which is going to be a roundtable discussion type show. Again, gaming related, focusing on one particular topic and really drilling into it with a lot of people to get them information about it. So that's going live probably the end of January, February, somewhere in there. Um, so I've been working on that. So yeah, that's going to take a lot of my time. But Kirok... That said, yes. that said, yes, I actually got a chance to sit down and actually game. Just game. <sighs> what, it was an ga- amazing thing. Okay, hang on. We got together and gamed one night out of that month. We did, actually. Like, you, you, you've been gaming and, and enjoying other games and stuff like I, that. I or... have. As, as a matter of fact, um, I, I hosted the uh, the Freeview event for December. Oh, yes. Which yeah, was Paladin's. So yeah. we got to do that. We got to do the review, and that's that's still up on Twitch for here. I was going to copy that over to YouTube, and I just kind of forgot to get around to it. So if the videos are still there, I'll grab them if I can remember. We have 15 days from when we record. I might be able to catch the, the review one. We'll see. Anyways, but yeah, so we'll. Uh, I, I got to do that. So I got to play Paladins. That was a yeah. lot. That was a lot of fun. And then me and Kyoto uh, actually uh, played a little bit of StarCraft Two. Nice. It's, it's now a free to play game and we we owned the original uh piece of it so we got a little extended into that so that was a little fun and then i got to play everquest 2 with you yes as a matter it's of fact the only it's the only time i got to play it but i i plan to i want to play more i want to i, I want to get you back on play more because okay. i i yeah. got sucked back into it my wife got sucked into it my roommate got sucked into it so nice. we're all we're all just like hammer on EQ two now. It, it, it's it's kind of hilarious. But yeah, I got the game. It's a it's a amazing thing. What a full surprise! Oh god, it was, it, I mean, uh, literally, it was it felt so good to sit down, you know, get get a boatload uh, of energy drinks and candy and bad food and just grub to two a.m. 
you know, playing hardcore with my wife by my side, my roommate playing with me. It was like it was like the old days for us. It's great. Nice. How about Very you? Nice. How about you, my friend? Ah, uh, me. I just it was family. L- literally, the whole month was like just doing stuff for family, especially even closer around to the holiday times, so Certainly. like the twenty fifth and and uh, New Year's Day. Um, that's about it. I had like a good five days off, which was great. Just relaxed and do much. Uh, mm-hmm. That's it. I was just quiet. He's like, you, you, Mr. Chill. Mr. Chill, you got it. And I was playing around, fiddling around a lot with my Fallout 4 uh, on VR. Ah. And uh, I'm still battling it. It's probably one of the most, tro- not uh, not troubling, it's one of the most uh, unstable games I've had in VR. Oh, I've had really? issues. Yeah, I've had issues with textures. I've had issues with crashing <laughs> in the middle of streams and stuff like that. And I'm like, I'm ready to go. Like, they need to fix this. I'm done with this. And just that's why today I, I streamed uh, Mafia 3. I went back to it. Oh, gotcha. So, yeah. Well, sp- speaking of Mr. Chill, how you doing, <sighs> Zip? What have you been over the holiday? Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, not much since my computer crapped out on me. <sighs> but I did buy Nino Kuni. <laughs> oh, that's graphic. right. Did you get yeah. two? Your, your, no, your I computer got, no, got a bug. No, not even released yet. And I oh, only okay. got a PS3. <laughs> okay. I uh, know. I got Nino Kuni. Wrath of the White Witch from yeah, PS3, yeah. which is basically Studio Ghibli the game. Already then. So that's <laughs> really fun. And uh, so you got yeah, games, this, but you actually play them. Yeah, I've been playing that that one like it's going to be going out of business because it's an old school RPG with a lot of twists to kind of re- kind of regenerate the genre. Because right. imagine like Harry Potter and Pokemon. No, I yeah. don't want to. Because, <laughs> so like, you... instead of, like, capturing monsters, you have, like, each character can have three different familiars. Oh, for the love of Christ. Anyways. <laughs> I, no. I, 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 Pikachu, no. I, I, Pikachu, <laughs> no, a little no, lightning no, bullet no. on his head. Just, no. I don't know. It doesn't work for me. Anyways. <laughs> so what'd you get for Christmas, Bob? Money, because I have to spend about 500 bucks to replace a graphics card. Because oh, the computer man. got a bug. Yeah, a lot of literally, about, literally about that. About a couple of them. <laughs> God damn it, Kirok. Yes, Christmas. I I got uh, I got a Garmin GPS for the Jeep, and it's got a built-in dash cam. Freaking sweet. Set that thing up. Got it working. It's it's pretty cool. I mean, it's cool. It's got a dash cam, but really, you you got a turn by turn navigation, dedicated turn by turn navigation device. When you have a phone that does that already. Yeah, I know. I I actually believe it or not, prefer a dedicated device for that than using the phone. Okay, well, good to know, Mister Luddite. Did you get any good rocks while you were at it for uh, Christmas? <laughs> no, no rocks. You freaking Neanderthal. Oh, if you want to go for like weird ass stuff we got for Christmas, here's one for you. I got a pair of like running shorts, or not shorts, but pants, like jogging pants. Do I yeah. want? Do I want this conversation to go on any further? Hold up, but. The, I, I thought they said Adidas because they have Adidas, the Adidas little pyramid yeah, yeah. logo thing. Yeah. No, they're Adidas. 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 Are you <laughs> okay? Never mind. I don't know what to what to think. I'm not wearing yep, them. We're moving on now. They're just Adidas. <laughs> Anyways, my 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 big ticket item was I got uh, yeah, a new gaming chair. Oh, so sweet. that's I'm oh, happy about sweet. that. That's and awesome. Yes, I'm happy about it. Now, I, I actually want to do a review on it because it, it's pretty nice. It, it folds dead flat. It actually has a leg rest that comes out on it, so I can lay flat on it. And the best thing about it was I sport. I went ahead and splurged and got paid like 28 bucks and got these casters that are um, effectively uh, um, rollerblade wheels. Yeah. That you use instead of the, the stock you know, little shitty casters that they come with. They're plastic. These are nice, big, heavy-duty uh, rollerblade wheels. It, it, it is so nice and smooth. It's beautiful. <laughs> oh, I love it. So oh, that's amazing. Now that that said, the one the one thing I'm finding to be a little bit problematic is that the 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 base of the seat's a bit. Th- it's not thin, but it, it's very squishy. So I just go right down to the bottom. My hips start to get sore because I'm pressing the bottom. But nonetheless, I'm happy with it. A lot of stuff I got this year was uh, uh, utilitarian. My daughter, I love her to death. She got me a Rick and Morty uh, mystery box from Top Topic. 
And so she wants to set up a time for her to come down and join me. We're going to do an unboxing for my channel. So That's at some amazing. point, I'll That's get that great. record. It'll be fun. Anyways, um, hey, like I said, holidays are over. We're back in the swing of things. It's 2018, Kirok. Holy yes, it is. shit. A brand new year, man. Brand Holy new year. Holy shit. And a lot has gone on. As a matter of fact, um, I, I, <sighs> normally the holiday season is a quiet time. This, this is why we take time off in the holiday season because yeah. news dies down. We go see family. <laughs> that did not fucking happen this year. As a matter of fact. It there, seemed like every video game company was aiming to get coal from Santa. Oh my God! It is you. You have you have hit the nail on the head, Bob. It, they, uh, you know what? Fuck it. Let's just do this. Yeah. Let's let's, just let's, let's let's get into it. All right, guys. Welcome back. All right, let's get into this. First, first article on the news. Uh, PlayStation has had the best Black Friday ever in terms of console sales. So a Sony rep basically said that this past Black Friday, they had the best PS4 sales in the last 22 years, or the best console sales, this one being the PS4 in the last 22 years. So they're like, hey, look at us. We're relevant. We're still relevant in the shadow of the Switch. <laughs> shadow of the Switch are two different demographics. Hey, there's still consoles. There's, 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 there's still consoles. <laughs> That's like saying, saying it's like, yeah, we're kicking that Care Bears movies at ass right now, even though we are making a Deadpool movie that's rated R. You're two different demographics. Well, I tell you not what, competing against each other. So this isn't really about being relevant. Let's just go ahead and skip right down to uh, Bob. Uh, is Sony scared of the Switch? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sony is scared of the Switch. Head of corporate planning said the Switch is a factor that they no longer ignore in regards to their gaming business. Uh, to me, that doesn't say they're scared. They're just going, hey. We actually have to plan them as a competitor because, and a lot of this has to do with their indie initiative and stuff like that. So basically because, what you're saying is they underestimated Nintendo. Yeah. More as, or less. as did many of them. Yeah. Uh, I mean, because here's the thing. Huh? I don't buy a lot of, like if I had a Switch, I would buy as a indie box. Anyways. Should I keep going or are you? Yes, go. Okay. So Nintendo Switch is the fastest selling U.S. console ever. This is reported by Engadget. System has sold over 4.8 million units in the U.S. Uh, and it's basically uh, 4.8 million units in the U.S., but it's up uh, over 10 million worldwide and puts them right on track for 14 million units uh, in the in a year. They wanted to do a 14 million in a year, and that's uh -huh. their goal. So we're doing pretty good. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Which would which would be right uh, in line with my prediction. Oh, it would be right in line. With your, you're you're 100 percent right on that. And I, I when I first read that, I was like, "Wow, work is getting this one right." Damn so, skippy. Good stuff. Good stuff. Also, in in, in the Nintendo spheroid of things, uh, we and GameCube games are going to be coming out. Kirok, they're actually going to remaster the Wii and GameCube games. I, I, I oh, that's so sad. But, this is so but stupid. They're, they're, it's great. But they're it's coming great. out on the Nvidia Shield, not yeah. not not for the uh, Switch. Sorry, and uh, oh yeah, they're only coming out on uh, in China. So I still think that this has something to do with those weird laws they have, to where if you're a Japanese company, you can't sell crap over there, but you you can do it. It's like a console ban sort of you thing. Know, and I wonder who's making it because Zelda Remake Studio is hiring for a new Legend project. So this is the guys that are responsible for bringing the 3DS remakes to, of Ocarina of mm -hmm. Time and Majora's Mask uh, over to the 3DS. And so now they've basically gone and reached out and said, we need people who are familiar with or experienced in C++ and Unreal Engine to work on a new Legend Uh so it's going to be interesting. <laughs> Speculation out there is that Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask may, re, may be redone for Nintendo's latest console. But now I'm worried it's going over to that Shield, NVIDIA Shield in China. <laughs> Question, does the I, Shield I, 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 take I Amiibo? Does it have Amiibo support? I, 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 <laughs> uh. Thank you, Bob, so much for that. <laughs> <laughs> so... Here's some here's some little cheer you up, Kirok. Here's some little cheer you up. Nintendo cereal is coming back. Are you what? Nintendo, it's for breakfast now. Nintendo, it's a cereal. Wow. Nintendo, Super Mario Jump. Nintendo, Innisfree Flavor Crunch. Nintendo. Cereal 
cereal system is a super part of this nutritious breakfast. Nintendo juice cereal you want. Okay, so I'm, I'm being a little facetious because it actually isn't Nintendo cereal that's coming back. It's actually Super Mario cereal. Hooray! Oh, so we're, so we're not getting the Nintendo Entertainment cereal? <laughs> but, this, but this is what I'm talking about. I doubt, No, it's not coming here. I'm pretty sure it's not coming here. You're going to have to ship them out to me. Yeah, you're, you're going to have to because not only do you get this wonderful cereal that uh, is mm, meh. Of, it's, of course. It's, it's, okay. it's, got, it's an super... amiibo built into it. Of course, you take your little box and swipe your box. Uh, was oh it? my god. They're mini SNES minis. They're NES minis. Of course, they can't stock their freaking cereal either because you're not going to be able to get it at Target. <laughs> yeah. No, it, 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 well, it, that just means we'll buy from Target to go to ship it to uh, Kirok since it won't be in. Uh... <laughs> so, I, I'm sorry, Kirok. We tell you that, you know, remasters are coming and, and it's only and in they China. Can't have it. We're getting cereal, and you're not getting the and cereal. I, and I can't have it, because I'm in Canada. Like, but, what's this? But, but, you know what? What? Nintendo Power Magazine is coming back! Oh, yes! Great issues plus six free strategy guides on a hot new game. That's twice the power for still 15 bucks. Wow, call now. Okay, so it's not exactly the magazine coming back. <laughs> it's a well, podcast. It's a po- <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying to cheer, cheer Kirok up. <laughs> You're cheer, here. trying to cheer him up, and you're giving me nostalgia blue balls. Okay, I, I'm really not. I, I, I'm, I'm just going to sit here and enjoy the tears of Kirok for a little while. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks a lot. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Does he cry maple syrup? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's, that's what I do when I make pancakes. I just cry over them. Well, I, 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 I look on the bright side, Kirok. Yeah, you can't get those games, but you can still get games on Steam, and you can even use Bitcoin, right? Yeah, uh, well, actually, no. Steam is no longer accepting Bitcoin due to high fees and volatility. So, yeah, this is reported by The Verge, and Steam is dropping support for Bitcoin purchases in their store. Uh, They indicated this is due to the volatile nature of Bitcoins, and in the last year, they've gone up exponentially. And as an example, they pointed out that transaction fees while using Bitcoins to purchase something went from went up to $20 per transaction from 20 cents. So yep. they're like, no, nah, I'm out. I'm out. But uh, so Bitcoin is absolutely worthless then. Uh, no, not exactly, because some people are, you know, shunning Bitcoin now and others are accepting it with open arms. For example, G2A is now selling Bitcoin vouchers. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So my thing on this is I, I don't trust this. Yeah. What? Are you? I just it's okay. okay. So, Basically, what you said was, hey, this pharmaceutical company like CVS isn't accepting Bitcoin anymore. But if you want to buy your weed from Hermando down the street, he'll take it. Him. He'll take it. <laughs> So uh, what do they got? They have denominations available at 25 euros, 50 euros, and 100 euros in Bitcoin. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I trust them, period. Yeah, that's, that's let's my face, take Because let's face it, over here, that couldn't, wouldn't happen in America. Well, <laughs> well, so we all know that you can't fr- trust GTA because they're assholes. But luckily for us, you can, still, you can still trust the Honest Gaming Studios. Right, Bob? Yeah. What on us gaming studios? Because let's face it, I, like Destiny's like, yeah, we're we're gonna be completely honest with our players, and you know, we're sorry for the last thing we did, but you know, we'll we'll fix it, and thank you, and you know, we're sorry, and we we'll, we won't do it again. And we'll listen to feedback. Well, here's the latest in the. We'll listen to your feedback. Uh, so was it Curse of Osiris dropped? Yeah. And, and now mm-hmm. you have an expansion for Destiny Two. Yay! More content. Hey, more content. A day's worth of content, but more content. <laughs> and if you didn't buy it, you got locked out of the content in the vanilla game to where you couldn't get the platinum trophy anymore. And cause... So something I had access to before is no longer accessible? Oh, wait, wait. Only if you don't buy the expansion. Oh, hold up. 
<laughs> Let me tell the full story because <laughs> no, no, we this... ain't got time for full story. We got time for they got no. screwed. Like uh, they they did fix it, but here's what happened. Okay, so basically, they went. Yeah, we're going to raise the power level or the light level or power levels you have to have to the new maximum with the DLC for these things that you could access earlier for these particular raids, mm -hmm. right? And that gated off content that was previously accessible. So if you didn't buy the DLC, you got dicked. Exactly. Damn. And then they went, yeah, we're, 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 we're going to fix that because all of our customers are like making, making it to where even though we got their money, now that we can get money of new people and we can't get more of their money through the Eververse because they're not going to continue playing. So let's put this back in. So they'll quit, keep on playing with the Eververse. <laughs> well, because that's at, their microtransaction store. At least on the bright side, if we can't trust companies like G2A, <laughs> I can't even say it with a straight face. And you can't trust studios. They're making games. At least you can trust Apple. Because Apple now requires through their Apple store that any company that has any kind of loot boxes must clearly post what the percentage or the, the likelihood of hitting on these loot boxes are. And and just for the record, they, they, they clearly spell it out. Like, literally is anything that's a loot box is by definition a mechanism that provides a random virtual item to purchase. So if you have one of these, you have to disclose what the likelihood is, the chances are for these rules. Now, the problem with that is like them actually enforcing it as big as the Apple hey, Store is. At least Apple is doing something. And had all the game industries actually got together and got on top of this like they did with the uh, ESRB ratings, we would be okay and they would govern it themselves and be happy. Unfortunately, they didn't. So now we've got lawmakers in America who are starting to get together and putting together the first anti-loot box laws, which aims to ban sales of loot box, any kind of online virtual gaming or virtual gambling for anybody under the age of 21. Which... Mm -hmm. I mean, with all due gambling respect, gambling isn't illegal in this country, but it does have to be regulated. Exactly, but I mean, kids should be doing this anyway. There's kids that are gambling skin, so uh, I'm not going to argue too much. And yeah. and and to be fair, the company that really pushed this the most to really fuck themselves over, kind of got bit in the ass. And that's EA, because we all know oh, how yes. EA is. <laughs> yes, electronic and... assholes. I mean, art. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're right. The first time EA's stock. Shed a, a, a cool three billion dollars after the whole Battlefront Two debacle. Which, if you if you missed that, they basically had a very pay to win loot box heavy uh, motif for this game that yeah. everybody railed against, even in the visual testing, and they kind of rolled it back. The problem is they've designed a game that really needs to be a pay to win game, and they pulled out the pay to win part of it. It's going, oops, ah, where we think this, and left the rest nothing. Of the it's game is wake, yeah. yeah. So now it's that, just epic gr grinding shooter the game with yep Star Wars skins. Yep, <laughs> but it's okay because it took me three months e to unlock Darth Vader. EA will learn from this. No, they won't. <laughs> They'll <laughs> have to become even more scummy. <laughs> How do you know? I used to play Ultima. <laughs> no, it says it. Right it's a transition, Bob. <laughs> Hint! Hint! I would, even then. Because, like, they'll adapt, they'll become more scummy, and they'll make their sports games that none of us care about pay to win. Like UFC. Like, like UFC. UFC. There you go. Because, you know, now, now, now I can pay to punch better. Because if I have a three-star punch, it's better than your one-star punch. So by that, so that, because I have a bigger wallet, I have a bigger punch. This is literally dick wallet the game now. <laughs> my game determines my, or my wallet determines my dick okay, size. But <laughs> in, 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 so, in, in defense, we, we, we don't mean to piss off or upset people who actually like UFC. Because apparently there are people who like UFC. Yeah, I mean, I like UFC. I, I liked it so much that I watched this one guy stream it on Twitch. And get away with it. Yeah, like he had his game, he had his controller like this. Green screen. It was like. 
<laughs> Dude, I swear to God, we can't make this up. The guy actually streamed a pay pay view a pay per view event on his stream channel with his controller in hand, and mocking. The only reason he got caught is because that all his viewers awesome. is tweeting clips of him doing it. Oh man, because <laughs> Twitch didn't catch it. <laughs> Pair of balls oh. right there. I, props got, to the guy for that. Ball so big, I don't know how he walks. <laughs> boingy, right, boingy, I'm going to shift it up a bit. I'm going to get into the rumor mill here. Uh, Xbox is getting a keyboard and mouse support? Question mark. So uh, Microsoft confirmed the keyboard and mouse support via a leaked web posting that has since been removed. This is actually kind of cool because all the PUBG players on Xbox will be on an even playing field with all the PUBG uh, players on PC if they go cross-platform. That would be awesome. And who leaked this information? Oh, I'm not 100% sure who that Xbox, was. Xbox, Microsoft oh, did. Oh, God. Microsoft themselves? <laughs> they, awesome. they leaked it themselves by accident. <laughs> Oopsie. <laughs> and, 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 and maybe Oopsie there. <laughs> uh, More now, rumors. Yeah. Speaking of, well, it's actually peripherals. There's a company that makes a lot of retro peripherals, Retrobit, uh, recently got a licensing deal from Sega. Um, now, Sega, this could mean, and this is where the rumor mill part comes in, that we could get a Genesis Mini, uh -huh. a Sega Saturn Mini, uh -huh. or a Sega Dreamcast Mini. Now, this does take away the, like, if you ever went to, like, a Walmart, Target, or whatever. Like, you'll see, like, right next to Atari flashbacks, like these Genesis flashbacks. Let me go ahead and save you save you some time. The controllers suck, the UI sucks, the whole game the And whole they're gone. <laughs> yeah, and so we're not losing out by those getting taken off the market. But Retrobit actually makes solid hardware as far as, like, input devices. So it... it it's going to be interesting cool. seeing where they... Let's just cut to the chase what, what here. All we care about is the fact... That Dreamcast. Dreamcast. Yeah. Dreamcast! I, I agree. Dreamcast 100%. Mini. If they have that, I'll go for it. So, oh, God. Um, please have Power Stones. <laughs> God. Oh, God. Oh, that would be so good. Uh, Amazon may be planning a YouTube rival. This is reported by Engadget. So... This is pretty damn cool. If Amazon is doing something to go against YouTube, this could be the, the big guy. No, I think it's awesome, dude. Mm -mm. Yes, mm -mm. yes. Mm -mm. Uh, and the reason I say is a few reasons. One, YouTube is just basically a die. It's just no, it's not. Left, right. Well, no, okay, no, it's, it's just regular dying dying since So much red freaking tape, right? Amazon has bought Twitch and it has flourished. So that's an example of Amazon doing something right. I, I can't and, argue uh, there. And uh, someone's got to kick YouTube in the balls, man. Yes, that I agree however, with you on. However, I've I have I friend. pay for Prime, and yeah. I watch you or I watch Amazon Video, and I'm sick and tired of coming across fucking shows. I'll watch the first season, and go okay, this is pretty good. I go to watch second season. Oh yeah, no, that's gonna cost you. Yeah, you have uh, Prime, but season two is gonna be a that's buck. Interesting. I, I buck ninety nine per. But then I again, have. the videos in Canada are different than in the U S. too. There, there's now, different. I, I don't watch Netflix. polar bear porn, now, so here, I have no idea. Here, here's one thing I want to point out about this little bit of information. What's it called? Uh, what's what called? Oh, there was. I don't think there was any mention of a name. Amazon tube. Amazon tube. Amazon tube. That I doubt name that's gonna be the name. Needs to get changed. About yeah, I, I suck at Google tube. <laughs> because like seriously, Google's already been bitching about them about not selling the Chromecast stuff because I bitch about that. I complain about that because I want to have the one-stop shop where I can get everything I need. I use Amazon Adly for ordering shit. I want to be able to order a Google Home. I want to be able to order a Google Chromecast because I'm sorry, yeah. Amazon's little tablets are pieces of shit that are completely detached from the Google sphere. It, it is a pain in the ass to, to do anything, even your email or YouTube through their own fucking tablets. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. You know what? Well, hey, you know what? No, we're, no, we're done. I'm, I'm now, it. now I'm just getting pissy. So I'm now just going to, I'm just going to let my ire out on Apple because I love doing that anyway. <laughs> let's, let's just face facts here. First of all, uh, if, in case you missed the memo, there are people who complain about the performance of older phones and come to find out that the performance issue was actually um, 
an intentional one. Apple is actually uh, hindering the performance of the phones because there was an issue with the power that basically it was it pulled down to the batteries were not were subpar. And if the CPU gets too much of a load on it, pulls too much power, it will cause the phone to reboot. It basically just loses power. It's like trying to suck, uh, suck too much power out of it. It can't do it. Now, Apple has apologized for this error on their part for their batteries and has kindly out of the graciousness of their hearts going to let you replace your battery for a small fee a discounted fee so instead of paying yeah, like $80 off. yeah instead of, instead of paying $80 you can, you can pay $30 so apple is so very kind of them to to allow you the privilege of graciously giving them a nominal amount of money to fix their mistake so good on you apple for being good people i mean yeah but with like lithium batteries and stuff especially proprietary batteries is this well, at cost most likely they're not going to get hit on it. But on the bright side, when it comes to the hardware and the tech, tech tech bubble for the month of December, there's no way in hell that there could be anything worse happening than what Apple did. So what uh, CPU do you run? <laughs> Intel? Intel? Why? <laughs> so about that. Um, we have these two things, these two problems. One's called Meltdown and one's called Spectre. Great names. Both of these sounds like James Bond villain movies, so uh -huh. yay. Okay, let me explain what Meltdown and Spectre are and who they affect. Meltdown is Intel only, right? Okay. Spectre is Intel, AMD, and ARM. Meltdown affects, breaks down, breaks the most fundamental oscillation between the applications and the OS, right? Spectre... It's down. It's down it, to the silicone. It, everything, everything's, everything, everything's very low level of silicone. Let, let, let's yeah. not let's not muddy the wires with with details and everything beyond that. The, the but, scary part uh, about this on. is there are patches for meltdown. They ain't shit for Spectre. No, there really isn't. It, this this is this is literally bare metal issue. So literally at this point in time, they can the, the patch they have for meltdown. They can obfuscate the issue a little bit and help out with it. But it is going to be at an extreme performance hit in which to do that. And the other the other solution is um, buy new silicon. And yeah, and even then, guess what? This affects all CPUs back to 1995. Yeah. Oh! Like that's how old this is. Yeah, that's great. Oh, shit. I mean, my original PC is screwed. Cause I, got, I, got, I got Intel uh, Celeron 450. Like, there's only, like, a couple of these they don't fit, hit, but if it's an I anything, it's hit. Yeah, if it's yeah, anything you're... made by AMD, it's Just, hit. Here, here's, here's, here's how you can find out if you're affected. Do you have a computer? Yes. The I answer, the answer is yes, you're fucked. Yeah, <laughs> just, just it, it is a compromise. It allows people to get system-level access to your system and, and compromising it. So just be aware that it's out there. It is a zero day, and it sucks giant monkey nuts yeah, yeah but hey so, at uh, least it's not as bad as a copyright claim <laughs> yeah so in media news uh man's youtube video of white noise hit with five copyright complaints so i don't know the entire story behind this oh, but seriously white oh, noise oh, oh i can help you out with this like, this is great like, this wait, guy hang on, a second. hang on but he just puts a video up of white noise did he do this as a as an experiment he Tell actually me. does he actually does experiments of this nature he's very much into this he i love this guy because he did a dissertation for a phd in uh eight bit or uh basically uh chip tunes a phd okay. in chip tunes so chip -tunes. fucking awesome on that front uh -huh. no this guy makes you like it is 10 hours of what you see with audio noise going along with it. it's white noise yeah the guy gets five fucking D uh, and, and copyright I would, claims. Yeah, copyright yeah. claims. And none of them are take it down. All of them are, we're just going to monetize it. Fuck you. Yeah. Two of them were from the same people for two different sections of his video. Mm -hmm. It's what? fucking what? white noise. It's white noise. <laughs> what the shit? Ho ho hold up. Here's, here's a list. Ready? Yeah. Claim it. Catapult di distribution on behalf of white noise sleep therapy. Dig this yeah. on behalf of LMUL. 
Uh, UL records. I, I, again, it, it's five, five different hat. people, and four of them it's total. White noise. It's, five, it's white noise. It is fucking white noise. <laughs> if you do a search for white noise, if you just do, go, go to YouTube, Bob, and do, put in, you know, white noise, white noise, and you will get a bazillion returns. So th- this is this is fat cash for somebody got smart, uploaded a video of white noise, and then is just going around and tagging everybody that has a white noise generator on YouTube. And then just, you know, whatever sticks, sticks. I'm sure they won't challenge any of this, but nevertheless. That's absolute garbage. Well, it is yeah, garbage. And what's and it, garbage about this is, like, the videos that they're claiming are white noise videos, too. So I'm like, can he claim their videos back? Well, see, it, here's the other thing about the the, the the big issue here is this just – it further reinforces what, what Kirk was talking about is Google needs to get kicked square in the chops because yeah. this kind of bullshit is ridiculous. And, I, and I'll even, I'll even go one step worse than this. And this has to do with Logan Paul, the guy, first of all, oh. I'm not familiar with him. I learned about him because of this. First of all, his fucking Same name here. is backwards and it pisses me off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so here's, here's the stick. I want to put time on it. I probably going to try to go through here. The guy was in Japan. He was going through a forest that's well known for suicides. And his idea was to do a vlog there, you know, light, light and funny because it, 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 it's a haunted forest. They come across a body. An actual, yeah. honest to God, somebody just committed suicide. Um, and they found this person. And at this point, he made a very bad judgment call. He kept recording. He showed the body. He edited and posted the video. This makes him pretty much a square on really fucking stupid or a complete art douchebag or, you know, check all of the above on this. You know, if he was a soldier in the U.S. military, that's a war crime. Well, what what, what, what this what this is, is him being fucking stupid. And this is this is the state of society nowadays. Come on. If people don't have enough comments, it's anybody who would be editing would have thought it. Oh, that's you have all this time to fucking look at this. Seriously. (laughs) Anyways, he posted a, a, a. kind of a self-serving apology uh via t- you know via text on i think uh, twitter. twitter and yeah, it was twitter then after after getting lit up about that basically telling people man you you're a fucking scum to be self-serving and try to try to turn this around to make it a you know I, okay so he did this apology i, I gotta point this out because i find this fucking hilarious yeah, yeah. But he got lambazled by everybody for his 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 shit re- apology. Even PewDiePie chimed in, calling him out for no his way. shitty apology. Yeah. Even PewDiePie, which I mean, wow. he is like the gold okay, standard for shitty apologies. Nazi jokes, like in general, and no, 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 filming, no, 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 filming a dead body. This is PewDiePie. He is the master. Of giving uh, yeah. shitty apologies. This is the pro of shitty apologies calling you out saying, dude, that was a really <laughs> shitty apology. He's not a pro. <laughs> Have you, who's the name of the CEO of EA? <laughs> Hardly. He doesn't even apologize. He just, oh, wait, no, Destiny. Destiny. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who, no, he, 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 Blizzard. He, who's he, theirs? He, he, he does, that's the whole different thing. Anyways, um, this further <laughs> emphasizes the aspect of YouTube because. He eventually pulled this video down himself. YouTube was fucking crickets on this. Yeah. And here, here's – just just to wrap it up here, I, I, I got to be honest. I hate Lacey Green. She is an extremist when it comes to feminism, and I don't like her, but I have to agree with her 100% on this. This, this statement right here, Logan Paul exploiting – a suicide victim in Japan to the tune of, of 6 million plus views on YouTube and demonetize a student protest in Iran with the whole thing going on in Iran right now is yep. a perfect example of what a, what a, what a, uh, sociopathic, sociopathic garbage power YouTube has become. Yeah. And, and I don't like her, but I totally agree with her. This is the state <laughs> of what YouTube is at right now. And again, whoever the person is that, that is at the, at the helm of YouTube, needs to be removed and quickly that's it rant over i'm done we're gonna move on but oh my dear god give me a break um listen guys we we got we still got quite a few things here i want to touch on and some of it's kind of not dark yeah i hate to say it it really kind of is so i'm going to try my best to just kind of touch this real quickly here um in case you haven't heard uh somebody got swatted and this is not even fucking funny. I've never thought it's funny. I don't like it. But the long story short is 
there was a, a argument that broke out and some people playing COD and the end result was they ended up calling uh, cops out on a completely unrelated person because of a false address. And that person is now dead at the hands of the cops because of this. So all the reason why we're bringing this, this article up real quickly, I'm not going to do it into it. It's just, I want to make people very aware of this. This is not fucking funny. It's no, not it's cool. Not. And I don't care how old or young you are. Knock this bullshit off. Because if you're the next person to call somebody and swat them, they could end up dead or somebody else could end up dead. And it's going to be yeah. on your fucking hands. So just yeah. Yeah. just be aware of that. Remember, if you even... Before, when you're going that, yeah, I'm going to get this guy. I'm going to fucking swat him. Don't. Yeah. Just don't. Don't, just do, don't. do it. Because... Even if you're like, well, I want him to die. I, I don't like, want. Okay, I don't well, want to. I don't. I with don't murder. want. Well, you will be yeah, charged with murder. You don't know. It's Anyways. ridiculous, it's stupid, and and now it resulted into someone dying. I think this is the first yeah, time ever so, too. So, um, let, 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 so let's hold on. try to lighten hold it up on. a little bit. I, I'm gonna lighten up the, the yeah the the atmosphere here. Please. So uh, the uh, World Health Organization um, is gaming an addiction or disorder, or is this a junk diagnosis? They're actually trying or attempting to uh, propose a draft for hazardous gaming or gaming disorder mm -hmm. into the uh, International Compendium of Diseases as a harmful addiction. So they go on to describe mm. what would classify an individual in this new disorder. And I'll read a quote here. It's uh, one who lets play, uh, sorry, one who lets playing video games take precedence over other life interests and daily activities resulting in negative consequences such as significant impairment in personal, family, social, educational, occupational, or other important, important areas of functioning. Oh, okay. so, so they're what you're to saying word is... It much like gambling addiction. No, no, Wait, what they're but... saying is it's just basically every gamer. Every no, single gamer. Every gamer. <laughs> every gamer. Not every gamer. I'm Why? talking about... Bob, no. you're ruining the joke. Shut up. <laughs> no. Why would you every do gamer. this? It's every gamer. <laughs> you just Actually, you just described so everybody in their twenties gaming about psychological. Oh, gamer. we're not getting into this. <laughs> then don't pick up Bob, psychological articles play, and have me games. on. This is bad because everyone freaking fits into this. I'm serious. My hey, Patreon. Okay, all right. Oh God, Patreon. <laughs> Remember when we said everything this was going to be a colossal fuck up? By, pa by our patrons at Patreon. And almost not. <laughs> For a few that are left. Yeah, because, okay, if you look at anybody the, that has a decent following, their backbone are the $1 patrons, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's like this guy's making a thousand bucks a month off of patrons. That's because he's got a, about a hundred or about 500 to 900 people giving him a dollar. Well, they were going to make it to where um, instead of, like, say, I give BRG a dollar and they have the credit card fees taken out on their end, the PayPal's fees taken out on their end. No, 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 no. Patreon decided they were going to do this for me because that was in my best interest okay, hold on. to pay more. Back up. Let's, 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 let's explain this simply. The way the, the payment architecture for Patreon before this all started is... I pay you a dollar, and mm -hmm. on the back end, you get the dollar minus processing fees. Right. Yeah. And Both they want to flip card this and, and put the onus on me, which means I want to pay you a dollar. I've now got to pay you a dollar plus 35 cents plus some per, uh, uh, some percentage on whatever like the amount 7%, is. 7%. So you'd be. So you'd now be I'm paying. paying 30. Now I'm yes. now I'm paying it. Now the problem with this is if I'm paying Bob, the difference is a dollar versus a dollar thirty-five, and that's fine. But when I'm paying a dollar, me personally, to Bob and to Kirok and to Ruark and to BDA no and, to B and to then that is a dollar thirty-five, dollar thirty-five, dollar thirty-five, dollar thirty-five, dollar thirty-five. Now my ten-dollar donation to ten different people, you know, one dollar donation to ten different people, just went from ten dollars to sixteen, seventeen dollars. <laughs> Right, right. So, yes, and at that point, people are getting cut. Yeah, at that point, I go, well, you know, I like Bob a lot, but I'm going to keep supporting Kirok. I'm going to drop Bob BDA, keep Ruark. Yeah, yeah, no. Cut Screw my Screw lens. Um, <laughs> yes, please. 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm kidding! I'm kidding! But, okay, so how do you think the internet reacted to this? Either one of you. Uh, <gasps> very, very well. Yeah. They they, they yeah. gave some positive and, and, and decent feedback just explaining their thoughts and opinions on it. Um, you ever watch Full Metal Jacket? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Basically, they walked up to you and said, Patreon, how tall are you? I'm 6'5". Well, I didn't know they stack shit that high. Pretty much. <laughs> and it was like, Patreon's like, okay, um, we hear you. So, never mind. We're not doing that. We're, we're, they we're hit just ju- the brakes on so, that so shit. They, they actually said oh, they yeah. were sorry. Yeah, yeah. We fucked up. Yeah, no, they, 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 they actually, just, it was a heartfelt apology. Which is rare, especially with these startups. They'll be like, oh, fuck it, we can do whatever. Oh, okay, well, we'll roll it back, but uh, fuck them. Or fuck it, deal with it. But no, they actually went, we have, it's like, basically they went, we are so sorry. We didn't know how bad this was going over. Next time, Like a pile of shit in a bag on fire. (laughs) That's about how well it went. But, it, it but went as well as orgy in a commune, okay? So we, we, we had failures across the board with companies, with loot boxes, <laughs> with all kinds of things, including Patreon. He's usually been always so good. So there's got to be something positive coming out of this. FCC. No, wait, that's not positive. God damn it. Oh, yeah, by the way, FCC is... Uh, has officially repealed net neutrality to the two to three um, yeah. in favor of, of deep six and net neutrality. And um, we all saw this coming a mile away. So we gave you the heads up before the break. It happened. Now what? We're not sure. Um, but I would definitely encourage you guys to keep an ear out when it comes to news of this nature and just be mindful of what's going on. Um, there is a, a, a YouTube channel called The Humanist Report. Um, I encourage you to check that one out just because he keeps on top of uh, Ajit Pai and FCC and all this kind of conversation in general as well as other political things. So if you want to know more about that, definitely go there. I will say uh, Twitch was kind enough to chime in with their feelings on net neutrality and saying, hey, net neutrality is important. Now, mind you, they posted this after the repeal. So, you know, thanks for... Thanks for getting there and, and giving <clears throat> us a little help there, guys. This is kind of like the asshole that, you know, watches you and your friend trying to shove your car uphill towards the gas station right as you're rolling over the hump of the yeah. driveway. Then he comes running up to do this to help you there out. There you go. I'll help you out. Thanks a lot, dude. <laughs> oh, man, that sucks. Yeah, it does. Anyways, guys, um, we're going to go ahead and take a break here real quick, and we're going to come back. We've got some... Uh, a couple, a couple of interesting articles we want to touch on of the uh, uh, gaming and, uh, and and media variety. So we'll be right back. All right, welcome back, guys. For the second half of the show, we are getting into the meaty bites. So what we did is we took a couple of, you know, uh, topics that, but they're like there's a bunch of topics, but there's some center around one, and then some center around another. We're going to talk about them in detail. I'll begin. PUBG performs badly on Xbox One and the X. This is reported by Eurogamer. So actually on this one, PUBG, I have have a little personal, um, not personal, what's the word I'm looking for? I I have actually experienced this, okay? Yeah, personal experience. Thank you, but it wasn't me, it was my brother, so you can't, it was one removed. So an Uh, interpersonal experience. (laughs) My brother played it on Xbox One. And he said that the damn thing would crash left, right, and center. He was playing. It was a little bit playable, but in a session of four or five hours, it crashed maybe once or twice an hour. And uh, this Christmas, he got himself a, well, he didn't get himself. Santa yeah, got him a, an a Xbox. Quick pause. Yeah. In a session of four or five hours, it would crash once or twice per hour. Per hour, yeah. So, I mean. See, I would be playing for four or five hours. I would get well, about an hour into it, maybe an hour and a half. And get a sledgehammer. And this is yeah. Well, that's how like, I'm... okay. So in a session of four or five hours, let's say five, right? So the math is easy. <laughs> it crashes on average one point five times because it's once or twice per hour. 
So 1.5 so times five is, let's see, too damn much. Too yeah. damn much. So wait, but here's the cool thing. The article says that it's also pretty unstable on the X, the Xbox One X. And I have to disagree with this. Uh, he got that Santa got him an Xbox One X. He's played it on there and moved everything over. And he's found that it has improved significantly. All the crashes haven't been eliminated, but he says that it's a lot better than it was before. So they're, they're saying it performs crashing. badly it's on crashing. both. And you're saying it's still crashing. And yet you're saying you don't agree I'm with trying... them. I don't okay. agree with them. How? No, I don't agree with them that you know it's, it's as bad. You know what? It could be. That's okay. what I don't agree with. Here, oh, my God. Time out. Time out. <laughs> I'm going to sub with Warped here, and here's why. You're saying you don't agree with them because you're saying that – because let's talk let's talk about what just what they're saying. Not your little experiment of one because let's go right. ahead and say an experiment of one with one sort of thing doesn't fucking work. You need to do it hundreds and hundreds of times, right? Okay. Ah. So. Yeah, you gotta repeat it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, ho hold up. No, so. no, I'm I'm good. Keep talking. I've got beer now. Put up with you two. Now, so. now I can deal with you two assholes. Okay. Drink. I'm, I'm defending the game. That's the thing. So, but your fan, that is what's true. happening is you're fanboying. The it, thing, it, thing is, is the game just hit 1.0 on PC. Hasn't yes, hit it anywhere it, else yet. Yes. Yes. So. I agree. Yes, it'll probably get better with time, but no, it's still it won't. Early it still crashes. Okay. So, so this can be applied directly. Could to the be so, VR hold on, well. hold on. Yeah, We're th this is just one thing about PUBG. When it comes to what's going on in the PUBG yeah. world, they finally they finally got out of early access. It could be worse. It could be a mobile. Oh shit! It is. <laughs> You want to talk about crashes? Oh, God. Uh, let's see. What is it? The Snapdragon CPU? Let's see how it handles a mobile version of PUBG that's currently in development. Tencent is working closely with Bluehole. One of those sounds like a porn studio. I'll let you guess which. <laughs> to make sure they bring over a similar experience to mobile. So it's going to crash. Cool. You know, winner, it... winner, chicken dinner on your phone. Good you luck. say you say this. However, I, I come across Nacho Pan who's played this game a lot. Him and Taco actually found some mobile battle royale type game, and they've been playing. Okay. I don't, I have no, no idea what the, what the performance of it is or what it's like, but I watched Nacho play it for a few minutes. It was on his phone running around. Well, that's pretty cool. I guess. <laughs> well, so, you know. What, There's... What's the what's the like? How many frames per second is film? Like twenty seven frames per second. That's yeah. all you need. Twenty seven or twenty nine. What depends? But here, see, like there are. Razer does have a gaming phone. That they do, just, and just, I saw it. It's just, actually just pretty saying. sweet. Uh, mm -hmm. Player unknown battleground grounds devs a mutter about a movie. Let's say PUBG. Yeah. So uh, rock paper shotgun uh, reported this in that there are rumblings about a PUBG movie on the horizon. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, I could uh, see it as a movie. I could see it as a, uh, a short of this person so, just kicking someone's ass. And I'm surprised you mentioned that because I agree. I can't see this as a movie. And if it must be a movie, the way I think it should be, it should be no context, no story, no dialogue, just like the game. And the camera follows one guy from the top of the plane all the way down, and, and you follow him on his journey to victory, and that's the end of the you movie. You do right. know that there's a movie out there called Battle Royale where they dump a bunch of people on an island and they have to fend for themselves, right? No, I don't. No, I, I, like... I, I didn't. I didn't. I'm going to be honest. I'm oh, gonna... my God! I didn't. Well, so... There, okay, there's a movie I... where this guy gets hit. I don't have enough beer. Needs... I don't Maybe have enough beer to make it through this. Time to copy the idea from others. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. There's a movie with a Jason Statham movie to where basically he kicks ass for an hour and a half before he <laughs> yeah. dies. To where he gets no. drugged with this thing called the Chinese cocktail, and he has to keep his adrenaline up to keep his heart going, right? So, like, there's a scene to where he's kicking ass, another scene to where he's kicking ass, another scene where he electrocutes <laughs> himself, another scene to where he where he keeps his heart going, he bangs a chick in public. Let's have that, but it's just the kicking ass sections for 99 people. Bob, I'm going to take a sock in you. I swear to God, I don't. I, I don't know anymore. <laughs> Here, here's the thing, Kirok. Yes. This movie has potential to become a big hit, provided it has one thing. What's that? Camel toe. Camel toe. Camel toe. 
Camel toe. Camel toe. Camel toe. I'm more of a fan of the moose knuckle myself. <laughs> Just two loaves of bread. So, for, why do you say this? <laughs> Because apparently there was a little bit of an error on PlayerUnknown's part, where in the game, some of their female characters happened to uh, sport a, a, a pretty notable camel toe. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Which just looks unbearably uncomfortable. But I, 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 I guess, to their credit, hey, good on them for making such accurate models for their characters. Good That's character beyond design. camel toe. <laughs> Like, <laughs> seriously, if it gets cold, she's going to bust that, those booty shorts. Holy crap. Oh, boy. Well, at least you have alternatives to PUBG. No, that's, that's PUBG. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Kirok. Uh, that, that, was, that was a hint. Sorry. Uh, sorry, Bob. That, that was, was a hint. Yeah, it's, called was a, Bob. Yeah. it's called a transition. Uh so, remember the freebie we did? <laughs> yes. So now, now apparently you can <laughs> do PUBG with not Tracer, not Reinhardt, not Roadhog, because Paladins. I bet you guys saw us talking about Fortnite. Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. Not uh, Fortnite. Paladins is getting a feed feed of pay battle royale game and calling it Battle God damn it! They're battle really Grand. not original. Like, no. Yes. <laughs> Consist of 120 players in a 20 now, minute session. I argue, Bob, that when you take a game that copies one game that's a hero shooter and then make it copy a different game with those heroes in a different environment like this, that technically makes it a different game, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so so here, here's the best part. Continue on with PUBG. PUBG creator wishes copycats would put their own spin on the genre. So Brendan Green, creator of PUBG, states he wishes other developers utilizing the now popular Battle Royale formula would add a twist of their own to the mix instead of just copying PUBG. Aw, poor PUBG. Still, still <laughs> you know, sour about the Fortnite thing? It's, it, it's funny you that. say I that. I remember. It's funny that you say that because all they've done from early access to now is manage to finally get a new fucking map out and give you the ability to vault over things. Oh, and during a bunch of people for stream sniping when they weren't doing during this whole time, their rival Fortnite is now adding yes. a 50, 50 v fifty team death match. To oh, their, adding, it's there and it's to, fun. to their to their battlegrounds thing, as well as we'll be adding a Dota 2 style battle pass to their game. And apparently they've done pretty well because they have over 30 million players. And at 1.3 million concurrent, which happens to wanna guess who they passed? Um PUBG? Yup. Um oh. I I will leave this. To Metallica, when we say, careful what you wish. Careful what you wish. Careful what you say. Careful what you wish. You may regret it. Careful what you wish. You just might get it. Oh, and uh, yeah, by the way, CSGO is rumored to uh, have a new survival mode that sounds a lot like Player Unknown Battleground. Uh, to us. Okay. So the CSGO community has been buzzing lately in regards to rumors <laughs> that PUBG style Battle Royale is inbound for their game. I mean, it just doesn't stop. <laughs> like, well, I mean, when somebody. That, that's your cue. Right. That's your cue, Bob. <laughs> so during the holidays on a Santa Tracker website, Google made, now this was single player, so you weren't actually playing it against people, a snowball fight 2D sprite based pub. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and to, 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 to the devs of PUBG, I crowned them King Nothing. <laughs> oh my god. I was going to say, you know, when, when one formula's gotten right, it's only natural that everyone else would just copy it. But Oh like, my god. Thing. I thought the Google one was at least cute. 
Because what would happen is instead of having a sphere that gets closer and closer, you're on, ice, on this icy land ma mass that would slowly melt. It's it was very cute. <laughs> it it was fun. Here's the thing: we we when you build a a, revol a revolutionary gameplay yeah. around one thing, the gameplay, you know, the one element of a game that you actually can't trademark or copyright. Um, that's actually there's been times where, in court, nope, you you can you can you can copyright your code you can trademark your name but when it comes your to characters. games when it comes to game mechanic function like this you cannot copyright it that is actually in law and this is where they're at they sat on their laurels they did do a goddamn thing they took forever to get their game out to release and by the end of it they had one count them one new map and one new feature come out that is worth of note i'm sorry but the fact of the matter is, they fucked up, and they're going to pay for it. Anyways. Oh, no, there's this stupid little match three. We're going to go ahead, and we're going to switch gears here. There's yeah. one more topic let's, we want to talk about. This let's is a bit talk of an, about anything. Comic books. Let's talk about comic books, please. I, I, can, I can kind of help you out there, sort of. Okay. So, so um, you know Disney, right, Bob? The big juggernaut that, that, that has bots. You know, Marvel. Oh, you know, you know they like let's and, see, they and, own, and Star um, Wars. Disney owns at one point owned Power Rangers. Has what owns Star Wars? Owns Marvel. Like all they need to do is buy Ninja Turtles, and they own my childhood. Yeah, them. yeah, them. Yeah, well, they 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 got a little more complete because it's official. Disney is actually purchasing Fox, the 21st Century Fox, for a a, a cool 52.4 billion dollars that's right 52.4 billion dollars to acquire 21st century fox studios now this is this acquisition is huge on, on a number of fronts and i'll tell you why first of all what they actually get out of all this content is what's almost to be quite frank almost frightening okay um i'm go once you're done going through the list let me have my comic book nerd freak out Okay. So, to that end, with the acquisition of, of Fox, they are acquiring all of the movie assets and, mo and me much TV content, not including the sports or news. So, the, the, the Fox Friends is not going to be Disney themed anytime okay. soon. Um, so, like, uh, w what they're getting is they're getting a lot of movie content. Uh, mm -hmm. Namely, of course, we talked about before is Marvel. This actually folds in just about every last little bit of Marvel into the Disney world, except for She-Hulk. Yeah, that's like <laughs> a different character way over there. Yeah, so other than She-Hulk, they basically have all of Marvel back. So kudos to them I that. Think, I think it's now, her and Namor. Who? It's a Mariner. No, I, I don't ask. Anyways, great. Marvel's equivalent of, of shitty Aquaman. Anyways. Um, <laughs> yeah. Evil so, Aquaman, basically. <laughs> so, what else do they get from this acquisition? And, and, and it's just for the sake of clarity, we're talking about Fantastic Four, X-Men. Uh, also, characters like Doctor Doom, Galactus, and, uh, of course, Deadpool. Oh, Deadpool. wow. Okay. Yeah, dead, right. de Deadpool under a Disney Deadpool. umbrella. Wow. I know, it's oh, wait, yeah. the word mutant. What this also use the word mutant. <laughs> yes. Yes, that's important. You're absolutely right. Here's the other thing that Disney gets. They get full rights to Star Wars. What? Oh, Star Wars. All of Star Wars. Oh, wait. Fox Disney had the producing rights for the first one. Correct. New uh. Hope was not actually under Disney's umbrella when it came to uh, production aspects. So this actually puts the entirety of Star Wars under their belt. Um, hmm. ad additionally, this acquisition also gets them a... a bevy of other content most notably are things like avatar the the blue people not the bending people um <laughs> oh, so, oh, oh so no penis hair no <laughs> uh -huh. um it also gives them planet of the apes franchise which is big it's turned into a big franchise yep. alien franchise yeah this includes predator as well as titanic and home alone <laughs> just to name a few there are more so, out there basically you have all, everything on that's published by Dark Horse Comics, everything that's published by Marvel, except for a couple odds and ends, 
the rest of Star Wars. So basically, this acquisition was just like, hey, you know all the stuff we already own the most of it? Now we own all it of off. it. It's also yeah. worth knowing that Fox owns Blue Sky Studios, which are the makers of one of my favorite movies, Robots, as well as, more notably, the franchises of Rio oh, and yeah. Ice Age. We don't need any more Ice Age. But now Disney owns them, so they're part of the so Disney it's all Universe. Theirs. Yeah, wow. Yeah. This also, also makes me ask the important question okay. of what else do they own? So, funny you should ask. This also answers, asks, begs the question of will Anastasia or Anastasia be a Disney princess? Because the prerequisites of Disney princesses are being met by Anastasia, other than the fact that she's not Disney content until now. I'll leave that. I'll leave that to the Carlin brothers to sort out. But, anyways, now here's here's the thing, Wait, guys. That wasn't a Disney movie. That was a Fox movie. Yeah, that was a Fox movie. Wow, that was really good for a Fox movie. Yeah, <laughs> That's, everybody says like, why is Anastasia a Disney princess? Because it's not Disney until now. Now here's here's the kicker about this. They get all of X Men. They get the full property rights to all of Star Wars. They get a bunch of other content that actually has potential to make a lot of money. Yeah, I don't think. Matter of fact, I will. I will bet you dollars of turnips that this acquisition at again, fifty two point four billion dollars, isn't crazy. even about this particular content. This content is important. It's validated, but what's the use of having content if you can't control the distribution of your content, or more importantly, right. if you're confined? to avenues that nobody's really frequently anymore. And what I mean by that is your classic avenues of physical media or over-the-air broadcast is going the way oh, of the yeah, dodo. Oh, yeah, because right now, what is it, the Disney vault? Mm -hmm. Where it's like, well, we make this movie. A year later, we quit producing it. Yep. Five years later, we get a limited run. Seven year, but anyways, here's so, the yeah. thing. It, 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 Kirok? Can I go on? Yeah, so it's interesting you mentioned this because this – with this, Disney will challenge Netflix uh, in a huge way, uh, basically buying 21st Century Fox. So, mm -hmm. uh, so why uh, why is Disney buying Fox? It will give them a 60% control of Hulu. Apparently, yep. Hulu's big, right? Because in Canada, it's not that not like, really. Uh, it, Hulu's uh, there. Uh, I'm Hulu's an there. Guy. Yeah, and 33.8% uh, of the content uh, in the market. So this That's coupled with thing. them coming out of with their own streaming service next year. And they did announce that. I remember we covered that back in mm -hmm. 2017 means that they're going all in on online content. Exactly. And this, yeah. this is where it's important because they're going to have a lot of controlling access to all the content that they have and the ability to push the access out, uh, content out on their own terms. Yeah. So right. this is going to be a big deal. And with them having a controlling stake, in all of the content, again, we're talking about 30, was it 38%, 33, 33.8%. 33, 33.8%. Okay, that is so, that is one solid third of the content out there. That gives them leverage. And that gives them leverage not only for the streaming services they have or that they have control of, like Hulu, or that they want to do like their own streaming service, right. but it also gives them controlling uh, a, a controlling factor on any new standards like Ultraviolet. They can throw their way around and, and back the standards they want to back for digital right. distribution. Mm -hmm. It's a big so, deal. Step now. aside, Netflix. Here comes a new platform. And this one's going to be big <laughs> because it's got all that stuff you just listed <laughs> available probably for streaming. A new challenger has entered the ring. <laughs> God, could Hulu become relevant? Uh, if they, Here's if the they, real they, news. 60 percent control of Hulu. It wouldn't surprise me if they kill Hulu and replace it with theirs after. Well, remember they're, they they're not they're not sole it. owners. It. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah. That's, but they're not yeah, sole like, ownership. They're not, they're not sole, sole owners. They're not sole yeah, owners. They have sixty percent. And, and there's not laws gonna... in place to where okay, it's not like in the movies where I own fifty one percent. I can do anything. No, there's actually laws in place that protect uh, minority shareholders. To where More importantly, it. is th this is not going to give anybody else access to their content or access to profit off of their content. If I'm yeah. Disney, I'm not going to sit there and funnel my stuff through Hulu and let these other companies like CBS 
get a cut of the pie or have some kind right. of controller say in my content. I'm just going to go ahead and create a new one. Don't they own ABC yeah. as well? That's a whole other story. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going uh, through my mind. It's like, okay, what all the – holy shit. Anyways, guys, that is yeah. that is what, the oh, big – uh, well, there's, uh, right. there's some things we need to go ahead and take some time to point out because there are some okay. go for it. contrivances and worries about this, especially from the comic book reader realm. Ah, yes. There are... Okay. Here's the thing. If you're like me, you enjoy comic books. And one, one of the things that Marvel's been doing for a long time has been kill, like just curtailing mutants and replacing them with inhumans. Hopefully that shit's fucking over because nobody liked Inhumans. They were only used like one time effectively ever. That's it. So yay, I get my X-Men back. But more importantly, what people forget is like, oh no, Disney is buying them. And they just hear Disney and they don't actually look into it because Disney is family friendly, right? Family family, yes. I get it. Well, I get where you're going. Deadpool's like, well, we're family friendly. It just depends on your family. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. They own... Touchstone. Yep. Touchstone Entertainment okay. is Disney's that's, less that's, PC arm. Yeah. Yeah. They do R rated movies. Like, if Disney's like, we really want to make this movie, but it's going to be R rated, how do we do this? Touchstone. Deadpool's a touchstone. <laughs> touchstone. No, thing. You, you, what do you mean? They won't show the Disney logo and then rated R? No, no, no. Go It'll bigger. Be touchstone. <laughs> touchstone with the big, big, big thing. There's a Disney Castle in, rated R. But buried in the credits. Much like Iron Man 3, which was a, a movie I, that had themes about PTSD, had people who literally explode. So there's a, a suicide just, bomber theme. I want to see that Deadpool. I want to see yeah. Deadpool flying over the castle. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I want to see. Like, and I was like, just see, have someone, him flying over the someone castle. Someone on the internet's <laughs> got to do that. Uh, Seriously. Flying he, over the castle. A little, a little riding just, a unicorn cast. while eating a chonga. Yes. There you go. Internet, make this happen. I gave it that is yours. Comment key. down below Do when you've done it. Let us know. We'll put it on the next video for you. Yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> But, Anyways, you know, these are things you have to kind of point out because people do worry about this. Like, what does it mean for the actual projects? We'll find out. Apparently, well, 2018 will be an interesting year for for the media element because, um, bear in mind, the process of these purchases can take over a year, and most notably, sure. also there is some murmurings from the U.S. government into reviewing this acquisition to see if it's going to be allowed. So there yeah, are hurdles. Sports. There are there are hurdles that will have to be uh, jumped before this happens. So I I have a good feeling this is going to go through. We'll just see how long it takes, and we'll kind of go from there, and we'll see what 2019 brings as a result of it. All right, guys, we got to wrap this up. So we're going to go ahead and and move along here and uh, say our goodbyes. <laughs> Oh, man, it is so good to be back into this, guys, but it is also so good to be done. This was overwhelming. I apologize for it being long, but we are catching up on a month worth of news, so I knew it was going to run a bit long here. But nonetheless, um, we're at the end, so I want to say, first of all, a big thank you to Bob. We kind of juked him on times, and he was still able to make it, so thank you very much. Nacho was going to join us. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to adjust his time um, to our to our recording. So unfortunately, um, we'll have to try to catch him maybe uh, next week or as soon as possible we can. But Bob, Bob, my friend, how's life? Oh, life is doing decently. Um, I'm actually returning to making a rant and a rave once per month. Yes. Each. Bob's um, back with his be... rants and rave. Well, he's, he's it... back with his rants. And on top of that, something new, he's going to start doing raves. Yeah, uh, basically once a month I do a rave, which is me being hyper positive about something um, that will be coming to you guys next week, and it's going to be over the National Video Game Museum which sounds in awesome. Texas, which is really awesome. Um, so, yay, enjoy that. Also, I'm currently waiting on my taxes to come in because I do my taxes early because I like to get my money ASAP. And I'll use that to repair my computer, return to streaming, and when I finally do get my computer repaired, I will also get 
back to making videos, but instead of doing it on my YouTube channel, I'm going to do it on the BRG channel to where there'll be new shows as far as podcasts and stuff. Sweet. Right on. Uh, yeah. Um, until then, you can usually find me on Twitter. I do have a YouTube channel and a Twitch link as well. Hot damn. Well, yeah, then. Thanks so much. I'm glad to have you back doing rants. I'm looking forward to the raves as well. Yeah, me too. We'll I'm be starting those. To we will be starting this up next week, um, and uh, we'll be going from there. Um, Kirok, my friend. Mm-hmm. Just, a, just, a, just a quick recap since we've been off for a month here on doing our own thing. People should know by now, but you do have yourself a uh, a YouTube channel that you do content on, right? That is correct. Yeah. So I'm still putting up videos from uh, Mafia 3 on there. Uh, did a stream today where I recorded a few more episodes, which will be going up as well. And that's on um, your Twitch channel? That's on my Twitch channel. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm basically streaming and recording at the same time as it live streams. And then I post it later for people to catch on the YouTube channel in case they missed it through the Twitch. So, so it's pretty definitely, cool. Definitely make sure you guys are on, on those fronts. It's nice because if you, you can catch things live, great. If you can't, you can catch it on the back end with the YouTube channel. And again, Kirok is part of the Project Singularity group. I definitely encourage you to head over to that group and check them out because if you go mm -hmm. to the members page, you will see great convenient little links to their YouTube or Twitch yeah. and or Twitch channels. So you can go over there and check their content out as well. So definitely make sure you do that. Also, one link that doesn't show up here necessarily but is important is Hop Along Games, which uh, yeah, Hop Along Games, yeah, it was we fantastically are, uh, fun. So so we uh, we did stuff, posted uh, videos up in December. Uh, January is going to be kind of dry. We're going to get together probably in the second week of January and do something for February. So January is going to be a dry month, but uh, we might change the format a touch where we'll have actual microphones in front of us to improve the audio. That would be a uh, good thing. We were looking at lapel mics, but they're just way too expensive at this point. So we're just going to probably go with like desk mics and stuff and, you know, you, you sit get around the table. Fisher Price karaoke machines and use the mics from those. <laughs> just tape them, tape them to your chest. Just buy a bunch of rock band uh, mics. Uh, yes, that's exactly <laughs> it. That would work too. But, uh, yeah, uh, that would uh, work too. Well, what about you, Warped? What's going on with you? Oh, man. Like, like I said, I, I have a lot, a lot of new stuff coming up uh, content-wise. Now, again, guys, uh, most of my content is devoted to BRG at this point. I do have a Moto Vlog channel and a gaming channel, and I will uh, post the unboxing for the Rick and Morty uh, um, uh, mystery box that my daughter got me. So I'm going to do unboxing with her for that, and I'll put up my channel whenever I get to it. Um, again, it's one of those things that I'm really bad about my own channels. However, <laughs> however... We do have a lot of content coming out for Ball Rocket Gaming. And again, guys, you know full well you can go to our website at ballrockgaming.com and check things out there. Again, for the most part, we do like events. You can check the events page. And that's where most of uh, most of what this page is used for. If you want to talk to us a lot, then I definitely recommend you head on over to the Ball Rock Gaming Discord channel. Yeah. Again, links are down below. You can check that out. That is where all of our chitty chat is. And I definitely encourage you to come pop in there and say hi. Everybody's welcome to join us there. And of course, again, guys, we do have a YouTube channel. And you'll notice on our wonderful YouTube channel that we are no longer just a podcast. No, 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 my friends. We now have a whole new show going on right here. This oh, yes. is Inside the Gaming Mind. Now, what this is is basically an interview show where I interview people, uh, get inside their heads, and we try to go through and talk a little bit about their online persona as well as their uh, RL persona, if you will, and get them a little better. And the, the hope is that you'll understand who people are that was just a little better than they before. And, of course, for the pilot episode, Kirok was kind enough to be my guinea pig. So definitely make sure, make sure you check I'll that out. I swear, Inside the Gaming Mind sounds like a 60-minute special. Well, as luck would have it, it's, it's, it's uh, about 60 minutes. So there you Yeah, go. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys, we have new, we have an, uh, some other new content coming up. Actually, on our Twitch channel, we're going to be starting a new show. It's going to be a once-monthly roundtable discussion show called Kirok. Uh, 
Defective Discourse. That's right. Defective Discourse. And Kirok is actually going to be doing the art for us. So thank you very much for that, Kirok. But this Not is actually going to be a show that I'm going to be hosting with a new co host, which is going to be Component Z. He's been on this podcast plenty of times before. So he's going to be my co host on that show. And we're going to basically try to get large swaths of people together from the gaming community. And usually we're going to pick up uh, a topic for that month that's a real hot topic. Like, for example, the Disney acquisition um, or something like that and just really pile into it and just pick it the little bits and pieces and let you know every little detail we can about it. So It's funny, as soon as you said it's a real hot topic, I'm like, really? I'm more of a Spencer's type of guy. (laughs) Anyways, guys, (laughs) ladies, gentlemen, it is good to be back. We'll be returning to our usual regular scheduled scheduled, uh, format and program on the next week here. This was a catch-up week for us. So uh, we wanted to get a chance to kind of find out what was going on the past month and let you know what was happening. So we appreciate you guys sticking with us through it. Um, I do want to put a little shout-out to all the wonderful people that have helped out with this podcast throughout the year. This includes, of course, Kirok, who's been my right-hand man through all this, doing a lot of the art design and formatting, helping me out when I needed help in terms of running the show, doing the editing, etc., especially through doing our, our holidays off mid-year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I would be remiss if I don't give a thank you out to the entire community of BRG. We have Seshi who's done music for us for this show. Yeah. We have Lintz who runs uh, BRG as a whole, as well as a bevy of other people like Ruark and Tox who help out keeping this show running. So we really, really do appreciate it. Thank you so much, guys. And we are going to be doing a big push this year, guys. We are going to be looking for new people and new content for this show. This means people that are willing to help us out in any way, shape, or form, either to come on and host with us once in a while, create little segment uh, uh, elements like uh, Bob does with his rants, um, or to help us out with things like being a technical director, editors, etc. We need more hands. The show, we've kind of, we're hitting our limits here of what we can do with just two guys. So we want to get a bigger team of people who can help make things a little more structured. This could also be relations if you want to help uh do promotion um recruiting etc for this podcast or for brg as a whole we certainly do need more people we are a huge community of, of wonderful people that we want to grow more so if you're interested please make sure you check the link out down below hide us up in discord say howdy get to know us and we'll go from there if you want to take the armchair approach we do have our patreon account Please feel free always throw a few dollars our way. It really does help out. It's not a huge thing, but it certainly does give us a lot more flexibility to do things like free view events where we do giveaways or helping people out, game games if they're short games, things like that. So, again, in advance, thank you very much, and we look forward to whoever the next new and interesting peoples are yeah. that we have for this show. So, again, thank you so much, guys. Thank you for sticking with us. And uh, you know what, Kirok? What's that? I'm glad to be back. Yeah, man, it's been a bit, and I'm like, let's do this. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm enjoying this. I'm back again. Well, let's do it. Let's do it again next week, eh? All right, let's do it. All right, guys, we'll see you then. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.